Hey viewers, welcome to another game with Casual Pro Gamer. As you can see, we have a 2 versus 2 on our hands here between Mil TV Staff and M. Adele on the one side and Lucifron and uh, Zan Mato, never heard of that guy, on the other side. So this blue versus red, I set them to team colors last time and it still is on team colors, so that is excellent. Uh, it does mean that um, we have left versus right, and that is uh, that is excellent. So that is of course forced. So you uh, you spawn uh, on the same side as your ally, because that is the only way to um, to get that real teamwork spirit into this game. And they are going to wall off over here. So it is. Um, um Come on, uh, Terran Protoss versus Terran Zerg. So both of them have a Terran player, which means lots of Marines and Marauders probably. And um, yeah, the Zerg player normally goes for Roaches, well early Zerglings and then into Roaches, but very quick transition into Roaches. Whereas the Protoss player normally goes for Stalkers, but Stalkers are very bad against Roaches, or Roaches are very good against Stalkers I should say. And um, yeah, the uh, Marines and Marauders are just good against everything. So, uh, it's it's all up to, um, uh, well, the Protoss player to come up with something that will actually defeat the Roaches. Because, um, yeah, otherwise he's going to, or they are going to be uh, outmatched by the... Uh, uh, by the pressure of the enemy team, because the enemy team has, well also has a Terran player, so the Terran versus Terran is going to be similar. Both of, we, both of them have that... Um, I can't select that. Yeah, both of them have that combination of uh, Terran units to look forward to. And maybe they're even going for tanks and, uh, and, and Hellions, because tanks and Hellions might actually be well, what's needed to defeat those Roaches. And he is indeed going for a factory here. So the factory might be just what they need. Um, it is going to be uh, equipped with a reactor because they're going to switch places once the factory is done. I'm going to chase out this SCV. The SCV was trying to uh, kill the SCV that's in the factory. Uh, that's building the factory. Um, but that one is still at 40 HP. So uh, it should be fine. And there is a... Zealot coming up to get this scout out of the base. So this is going to switch and um, he's going to build some uh, some Hellions. But uh, actually first going to build some Marines. Marines are of course very good at early defense. And uh, since the Protoss player doesn't really build a whole lot of early defense. It is going to be uh, yeah useful to just have something up at least. And maybe he's going to build his own reactor? No? No, just going for the Hellions. Nobody cares. Nobody cares what you think. Um, or rather, I think. Uh, doo -doo -doo. So the Scanty Pete in on the fight here. See, he wants to block that as well. And um, yeah, another plant like thingy here. Oh, he's going to join the army. No, another one over here. Come on, join, man. Yeah, I like the little critters, and uh, I don't know. Some of them are really silly, but uh, on, on in general, it's quite a nice uh, addition to uh, to the whole map. It makes it a little more alive, a little more of the feeling that you're actually on a different planet with different kind of uh, species. So, um, yeah. The stalkers found the one spot that isn't covered by the bunker range, and they're going to uh, try to do some damage to the supply depot. Obviously, uh, the supply depot can be repaired, but can it be repaired enough so that uh, they can't really snipe it? One of the SCVs goes down, and uh, that makes all of them run away. Two, three, four. Four of them go down because of this drop. And the drop is going to be good enough to snipe everything in this base. All of these SCVs going to go down. Well, maybe a few of them will. No, one of them gets like No, not even. 
And yeah, that's it, I think. I think that's the end of this game. Uh, three bunkers are still up, so he still has some time to uh, to do something, but with no SCPs, yeah, how are you going to compete? Uh, the income tab, yeah, 120 to 40 now, because he has some uh, uh, mules going. Okay, um, there are mutalisk outs, and the mutalisk are going to be reasonable against these stalkers. They're not going to be, like, really good, but they will do the damage, and um, yeah, that's exactly what they needed to do. Um, it seems that uh, yeah, the Hellions in the meantime have uh, chased away everything that was mining here. So the income will now be zero. And his uh, ally is at 600, but both of these guys are at 600. And so it's uh, just the gas that's a really big difference. He actually has 400 gas incoming, where these guys have 100 gas each. And um, that's because of the five extra harvesters. So um, good for him. But I think this is already the end of the game. Of course, they're not going to surrender right now because uh, they still have an army. And you never know what an army of mutilists can actually do. Um, sometimes you can actually uh, just get the entire base with a group of uh, mutilists like this. But almost sniping the missile turret and that would have been uh, very bad. And obviously he's going to try on the other side now, but oh, the stalkers are going to wipe the floor with these mutilists if they don't withdraw. Because, um, yeah, the mutilists can actually take this out, but they have to uh, be microed very intensely. And it doesn't really matter, because in 2 versus 2 it's not about that one unit. It's normally about, um, yeah, the buildings, like over here now. He's just uh, building uh, some cannons to uh, to defend, and those will come up. So it's all about the time. If you can uh, distract someone long enough, so an army like this long enough, then you're going to win instantly. So what is going to be their anti-air defense? It's going to be um, Vikings with Stalkers, I guess. Well, Stalkers are good against everything, just like Marines. Uh, it's just that those Vikings should do very well against these Mutalists. And are they going to come in yet? No, for now they're not coming in. More Stalkers coming and the cannons actually get some shots in. And one of the Mutalists goes down to a cannon. And um, yeah, actually kills one. Nice. So um, yeah, normally cannons are just there f to scare people off, but... Yeah, sometimes they actually do damage. So, look at this. The Vikings just completely sniping one of the mutilists before he realizes, well, let's get out of here, because, yeah, that's not a good uh, fight for me. So, by now, this guy has come up again. He has 500 income. Um, yeah, no gas yet. Uh, yeah, so they have a chance to come back now. It's not a great one. I mean, I still wouldn't put my money on them. But the Mutalisks at least are getting a whole lot of damage done. It seems that um, all of these Stalkers are going down. And it is all up to the Vikings now. The Vikings are going to have to snipe all of these Mutalisks. The Mutalisks really strong. And yeah, really nice transition there from the normal... Um, yeah, the normal build that we see, so normally we see, uh, uh, well, as I said, Zerglings and Roaches. And he just went instantly for Mutilus. And look at that, has Marines out to defend against the ground troops that might be incoming. But he knows that most of the troops are going to be flying, so uh, that's why he has all kinds of troops that uh, can attack flying units. And did he allow this guy to build up? No, he, does, he doesn't have anything yet, or anymore. Just four, uh, well now five uh, stalkers, but really not enough to, uh, to hold off. And is it going to be good enough? Well, another building gets sniped. And it is going to be, uh, well, this little army of... Uh, 
of Vikings that's going to have to do it. Um, yeah, now pressuring in with Marines and tanks. I think the Protoss player just gave all the money to the Terran player on the red team. Because that's the only way they could uh, they could get a lot of these, uh, these um, Vikings out. And with the Vikings they can control the the air and with the air controlled they can actually defeat this because most of the army is still air uh, there are some uh, some queens out actually that's the only thing that's out it seems let's see units um, yeah some bailings out and that's about it and he's going to come in snipe some overlords the Banelings are now grouping up, and this is what we normally see. Uh, as I said, Zirklings, uh, uh, Zirklings and Roaches is the normal strategy. And Zirklings obviously can be morphed into Banelings, so uh, that depends on whether someone is going for massive Marines, because they're really only good against Marines. They're reasonable against Stalkers, but only in large numbers. And wow, this is uh, it's it's a tenser match than I anticipated. I kind of assumed this would be over right after that first attack because that first attack was so so successful. But because this guy went for uh, uh, Mutilus, it's actually still going, and we actually have a very big army coming in here. And the Banelings are going to do a lot of damage, but the Marines are spread out very nicely. And they're not going to get caught by uh, by the Banelings at all. So the Banelings uh, sacrifice themselves or suicide into uh, whatever. And yeah, they really need some uh, some tanks to defeat those bunkers. But it's good enough. They uh, they draw out the Marines and the Marauders, and uh, yeah, the Blink gets them out of range. So this tank. Yeah, it has siege mode. It needs to take out these uh, these bunkers. But for now, everyone just building back up. Because they both have a reasonable army still left. Um, yeah, it's, it's just that the blue team is still behind. And yeah, with the blue team still behind, they're going to be... Uh, well, held back in their base and wow, one Zergling just running all the way across the map going to see what's uh, what's up in this base and it's going to go down instantly oh wow, miss rally point I guess and yeah, they're going to pressure in now they're going to try to get the other side of the base. And wow, a tank. Where's that tank? Oh, no. Hang on. That's this tank. Or these tanks. Yeah. Those were blue marines. It's kind of annoying that both of them have a Terran player. But of course, they, they always overlap. Because there's always one race that's the best in uh, 2 versus 2. And that's something that both uh, uh, players will go for. Or both teams will go for. Plus, normally you want the. I don't know if it's um, uh, if you have to go for two different races, but we always see two different races. So normally you want the variety and the the versatility of two races. Uh, but yeah, well, it's not actually necessary. Wow, a lot of the Vikings going down. Still only three Vikings left. Two now, and now there's only one. And is it going to be good enough to defeat this? Uh, this army here, yes, it is going to be good enough. There were only four of them left. And since that was the only army that was left, it was indeed that they were too far behind after that first attack. And you just can't make up for that, especially in high level play. This is definitely high level play. You just can't make up for that difference. He does have a pretty decent income, but if we look at spending here, uh, we see that... Um, uh, hang on, yeah, 10,000 in army, 8,000 in army, and this guy has 16,000 in army, but this guy only has 4,000 in army, so <coughs> not really anything to, uh, well, to worry about, and here you can see it, 
1450 in uh, the army and well the uh, gas values also in the advantage of the red team and only a hundred for our blue player so the blue player was just there to provide some income for um, uh, for the Zerg player and that is why the Zerg player has such a huge amount of uh, resource spent in his uh, his army tab but really yeah not a whole lot else uh, of course this um, economy investment is because he lost a lot of his buildings and he lost uh, all of his SEVs early on so that's why he um, he kind of had to invest a whole lot uh, he has 53 harvesters going so invested a lot in that but it really it wasn't enough they couldn't make it work with just one player producing army and um, yeah anyway hope you enjoyed and I will see you next time GG